The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Currents induced in a conducting shell oppose the penetration of a suddenly applied magnetic field and cause a force that tends to crush the shell. A thin conducting cylindrical shell is placed on top of a coil. This is the same apparatus used with Egerton's boomer in demonstration 10.2.1. We generate a large current in the coil by discharging an initially charged capacitor C through the coil. This current generates a large magnetic field which tries to penetrate the cylindrical shell conductor. Axial currents induced in the conducting cylindrical shell create a self-magnetic field which opposes the penetration of the suddenly applied magnetic field. These currents cross with the applied field cause a radial force inwards that tends to crush the cylinder. Here again is Egerton's boomer apparatus, composed of the driver coil and large capacitor bank with total capacitance of 48 microfarads. The capacitor bank is charged to 4 kilovolts. Discharging the capacitor into the coil with this trigger <coughs> generates a large transient current in the coil which in turn generates a large magnetic field. Currents induced in the thin foil cylinder to oppose the penetration of magnetic field <laughs> cause a radial inwards force on the cylinder that tends to crush it. Let's see that again. Here is what the magnetic field would look like immediately after the field is turned on if the applied field were uniform. At first, the shell acts like a perfect conductor. The magnetic field within the shell at t equals zero is zero. This happens because the axially directed surface currents are induced to buck out the penetration of the applied magnetic field through the shell. At the shell's surface, the radial component of the magnetic field is zero, while the tangential component is terminated by the surface current. The cross product between the axial current with the tangential component of magnetic field then gives the J cross B magnetic force as radially inwards. This tends to crush the aluminum foil cylinder. As time goes on, the currents decay to zero and the imposed field penetrates through the shell as if it were not there. For a step magnetic field, the surface current exponentially decays from its initial value, when t equals zero, to zero, with magnetic diffusion time constant, tau sub m. The time constant, tau sub m, is the conductivity of the shell, sigma, times the shell thickness, delta, times the shell radius, a, times the shell magnetic permeability, here mu naught, the permeability of free space. Tau m is the continuum version of the circuit L over R time constant. Let's evaluate tau m for our experiment. The aluminum foil cylinder radius is about four and a half centimeters. The foil, wrapped as two layers, has a total thickness of about 60 microns. We use the magnetic permeability of free space and a conductivity of aluminum of 3.5 times 10 to the 7th Siemens per meter. 
the calculated value of tau m is about 60 microseconds. With this time constant in mind, let's see what the actual fields are. Because this is a single shot experiment, we use the storage oscilloscope to record and store measured waveforms. We use this current probe to record the current in the coil in the upper oscilloscope trace. Its gain has been adjusted to 500 amps per centimeter. This small 200 turn coil is placed just above the driver coil to record the time derivative of magnetic flux on the lower oscilloscope trace. We charge the capacitor to 4 kilovolts. As we discharge the capacitor bank, we record the current oscillations in the driver coil on the upper scope trace and the time derivative of the magnetic flux on the lower scope trace. We see decaying oscillations characteristic of an RLC circuit. For our circuit parameters, the frequency of oscillation is about 4 kilohertz. We store these waveforms and reset the scope trigger. We now place the foil cylinder around the magnetic flux sensing coil. Remember, the upper trace records the driver coil current, which imposes the magnetic field, while the lower trace records the sensing coil signal, now inside the cylinder. We see that the driver coil current waveform has diminished somewhat, but that the sensing coil waveform within the foil cylinder has decreased even more. The magnetic field has been shielded out of the cylinder. This modest shielding is expected because the product of angular frequency at 4 kilohertz with tau m of 60 microseconds is of order unity. With a thicker cylinder, tau m is increased and the shielding should be more complete. Let's measure the field inside another aluminum cylinder that is about 100 times thicker. The bottom scope trace shows the field without the cylinder. Let's reset the scope and put the thick cylinder around the sensing coil. The new lower trace is essentially zero. For omega tau m of order 100, the magnetic field inside the cylinder is greatly reduced.